Friends, we have a problem. These are my pet poison dart frogs, the Dendrobates Tinctorious Cobalts. And I've accidentally let their home become a disaster. Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus. Today, I'm going to show you how having a bioactive planted enclosure for your dart frogs can get a little out of hand. And if you're not constantly managing it, well, ah, more embarrassment, honestly. You're gonna see what happens. We're gonna be redoing my Dendrobates Tinctorious Cobalt 18 by 18 by 18 inch Frogs and Cotorarium that has basically been overrun Jumanji style. All the plants grew too big, choked out the light because I didn't pay attention to them long enough. It's bad news. We're gonna tear the whole thing down redo it for them and I'm confident it's gonna look so much better. If you wanna see how we do that, stick around. I love revamping enclosures. It's something I do annually regardless for most of my animals. It's also kind of enrichment, you know? Mix it up, give them a new habitat. If you're new here, I make videos about specialty pets such as reptiles, amphibians, and different kinds of cool invertebrates. So if that's something you're interested in learning about, definitely consider subscribing down below and ding that little notification bell after so you don't miss any of my future uploads. I do my best to post, well, we're gonna say one video a week because Two isn't realistic for the next little while. Awesome. So this houses my two cobalts. I believe they're actually a sex pair. This enclosure is a disaster. As you can see, it's simply out of control. The frogs are doing great. They're happy. They're like, oh, hey, you're gonna come feed me? No, I'm sorry. Okay, well, I'm gonna take this out of here. I gotta disconnect the monsoon and then we'll move it on to the desk here. Hello, little friend. So the first thing we need to do here is safely remove the frogs, because obviously we don't want to tear apart their home while they're still in there. I have a 32 ounce deli cup here with a fruit fly lid. We're going to spray it down with some reverse osmosis water, and then we're also going to line it with some paper towel in case they defecate, just kind of help collect it and not let them hop around in it, you know, a bit more absorbent you could say. Now here's the fun part, I'm basically sticking my hand into a little jungle looking for these animals. And trust me, they're pretty good at hiding, so this took a few minutes, but finally I managed to wrangle both of them out. I can never get over how beautiful Tinctorious are, especially the cobalt locality. They're stunning animals, and I'm confident they're gonna love their new home. Now we have to carefully remove all these plants. I'm gonna try and salvage some of them as cuttings by planting them into a pot of soil, but whatever happens, happens. Now, I also wanna save the substrate because it's actually good quality Exoterra substratum. My intention is to mix it 50 parts with another substrate and place it back into the enclosure because it offers plenty of perfect nitrifying bacteria, healthy nutrients for the plant growth, aeration, and more. So there's no reason to toss it. We just have to get some of that organic debris off the surface and then collect it all. Okay, now that I've taken all the leaf litter and other debris out, I can scoop out the substrate. Now that most of the substrate was removed, really don't need to remove all of it because it's going right back in, it's time to make the blend. To create our blend, we're going to be using the Exoterra Rainforest Substrate, which consists of maritime pine, safe for reptiles, and a little bit of sphagnum moss. This will produce a substrate blend that drains well because we really need to have this for frogs. The last thing you want is a substrate mix that stays waterlogged. Yeah, it can hold moisture and that's important for it to be able to do. However, you don't want it to just sit saturated and soak up water like a sponge. The majority of it should pass through into the drainage layer, assuming that there's any excess water. Before we proceed with moving the substrate back into the tank, I'm just going to spray everything down a little bit, give it a good soaking, help wash it a little too. There's a little bit of caked feces on the side walls. I mean, again, that's not a big deal. They're going to be pooping in there anyways. And with dart frogs, you don't really need to do any regular substrate changes. All of that organic material just falls back into the soil and provides nutrients to your plant inhabitants. It's a very nice cycle you got going in there. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all, 
What are some of the pros and cons associated with keeping animals in a bioactive enclosure? Obviously, as you can see from the terrarium that we just took a look at, sometimes a little bit of negligence in the pruning department results in a whole planted enclosure not getting enough light and, well, doing that. I want to know from you what you think some of the pros are, as well as some of the other cons. Let me know. As always, I'll give you a comment a heart, and we can engage in a little bit of a conversation. Thanks! Okay, here we go. Time to get our substrate back into the enclosure. Now that we've placed a fresh layer of substrate back into the terrarium, it's time to start planting. Now, I want to be considerate of the fact that this tank isn't that big. Again, it's 18 by 18 by 18 inches. Although it'd be really nice to make the tank look full initially, we want to consider that over time, these plants will grow and occupy a lot of the tank space. As you can see, I've carefully tied this bromeliad pup to a manzanita branch using some gardening wire. Next, we're going to set up a coconut hide for the Tinctorius. The Coco Hut will sit on a petri dish, which seems to be a favorable location for egg laying. I'm also going to spray down the leaves, and then I'll set it up here. Perfect! When bromeliads propagate through pupping, it's easy to place them onto the enclosure wall because they leave these tough stems that can be jabbed right into the foam background. Here we're going to plant some tropical moss throughout the enclosure in hopes that over time it'll beautifully blanket the surfaces throughout. Now I said we're going for a more minimalistic approach, but I'm going to add this philodendron melanochrysum cutting. Yes, it'll get enormous over time and will have to be replanted somewhere else or at least cut back, but for now I want to place it in the back of the enclosure because it'll really help give a little bit more cover. It's just kind of plain back there. I'd really like to see something large grow up that wall. Next we're going to dress the substrate with leaf litter. This is important for several reasons. It'll help keep dart frogs off the wet floor too often and it also provides organic material for future custodians such as springtails to break down and live under. And on top of this, it'll also prevent the frogs from getting too much substrate stuck to their bodies, as this will likely stress them out. One of my favorite plants to put into a dart frog build is the creeping fig, Ficus pumila. It's super easy to grow. You see all those little roots? As long as they're on a wet surface, it usually takes root pretty quickly. You just have to make sure it gets enough humidity. That's an important factor when growing this plant. A lot of people take cuttings and throw them in a build without realizing that there's just too much dry air and not enough humidity and it dies. Another fantastic plant, Margravia rectiflora, is a great choice for a climber. Margravia loves to climb up walls or branches and it develops beautiful foliage. In my opinion, this species is arguably the easiest to grow and it's weird to say because it's Margravia and it's a beautiful, less common plant, but it's almost like a weed. So you can't go wrong using this species as an option. Now, another beautiful climbing plant, Solanum affinis julianum, produces some beautifully colored foliage. Although these little cuttings don't seem like much yet, they're going to grow over time and really accent the tank. The last thing I wanted to do is add some more tropical moss to different areas of the enclosure in hopes that it'll help carpet over time. What we're going to do with this patch is chop it up into finer pieces that we can sprinkle across the substrate. Each little bit will actually spread over time. This is an effective way to get moss to spread over different parts of the enclosure more quickly as opposed to purchasing one little patch of moss, planting it in one spot and waiting for it to go everywhere. I also made a quick last minute call to help secure that philodendron to the back wall with a piece of gardening wire. That way it'll help it stay against the wall until it produces aerial roots to anchor itself naturally, at which time we can remove the metal anchor. Oh boy everybody, the water dish is going in and the tank is just about complete. How exciting. And voila, the new Dendrobates Tinctorius Cobalt Vivarium is set up. I'm pretty happy with this. Again, I will admit, it seems a little plain for now, but we have to consider that all these different plant cuttings we put in here are going to grow and spread over time. 
and we want to maximize the usable space for the frogs as well. They have a hide to be secure and feel safe in. The rest is their roaming grounds. These frogs move around a lot all day, and I know they're going to have a party. The last step we're going to take before moving the frogs back into their home is adding springtails. Yeah, they're probably going to go straight for these as soon as they get back into the tank, but I want to put as many springtails into the environment as possible. They're hydrophobic, so it's very easy to flood the container of activated charcoal, and it allows us to pour them in quickly. With the setting up of a new tank, we want to keep the humidity levels nice and high, so we're actually going to block off that screen portion on the lid with some saran wrap. That'll keep humidity levels nice and elevated and ensure that the plants acclimate well. All right, everybody, now that our enclosure is all set up, it's time to put the lovely Tinctorious Cobalts back in their new home. Let's go. Wow, okay. They don't uh, waste any time. Now, if I'm being completely honest, this isn't the right way you'd want to do this. In an ideal world, you would set an enclosure up like this and allow it to grow in and acclimate for several weeks, if not even several months, before introducing your inhabitants. I can pretty well guarantee that several of the plant cuttings and mosses will be knocked over from their original position. But it is what it is. We need these frogs back in their home, and in the worst case, I'll probably purchase some fishing line and tie the moss to the branch more securely. There are plenty of little hacks out there to keep things exactly where you want them to grow. I think what we'll do is let them just kind of settle in here and um, once they have, I'll probably try feeding them. Awesome. Well, look at that everybody, success. Hey, don't be eating my springtails, you two. Okie dokie, it's lunchtime for the froggos. Time to feed them some Drosophila hydei. We absolutely love these. We'll start by tapping them all into a container and letting half of them get away, as you can see. It's like, you can't tap well, clearly. And it's scary, because they can climb the container until they're dusted, so it's a, it's a skillful game you have to play, shaking them and keeping them at the bottom until you can get them dusted. So we're using the Rapashi Calcium Plus, and we're gonna get a bit of that in there. Swoosh them gently. Again, I'm not swishing them too fast, just around in circles, and now that they're quoted, we're pretty good. Now we use the Super Vite. Once a week, I combine both products for dusting, and then I'll use the Vitamin A supplement once a month. I think we're ready to serve these frogs some flies. And check this out, the male Tinctorius is calling. That faint buzzing, that's his call. It appears that someone is waiting for some food, so let's go ahead and offer them the flies. Hello there. All right, here we go. Time to feed these guys. I'm gonna do a little bit to start. Here comes the male. I usually feed my poison dart frogs three to four times a week. It's so entertaining watching them eat. I mean, look at that, it's pretty cute. And the way they move around, they're almost like little jittery robots that seek out their target and in a split second, lap up their fly prey. You may also notice and question why it is that their toes tap the way they do. It is believed this is to startle their prey and make it disperse into the open where they can find it and consume it. Many species of frog are nocturnal, meaning that they are active at night. I find that one of the most rewarding aspects of keeping poison dart frogs, besides their elegant or beautiful appearance, is the fact that they are diurnal, which means that they are awake during the day. Having the opportunity to own frogs and actually see them be active when you are is really something and quite special. Although many species of poison dart frog can be rather shy animals, Dendrobates tinctorius are generally rather bold. Well my friends, it really looks like the frogs have settled in considering they're happy to be eating already. I'm really looking forward to giving you an update on how this terrarium has grown in in a few weeks or maybe even a few months. 
There have been so many changes happening in and around this room over the past two weeks. I apologize that I had a week where I didn't do any long form content. And honestly, as much as I try to do two videos a week, which really hasn't been happening consistently for the past year or so, there are so many things happening that have just made it impossible, almost hard for me to do one long form upload a week consistently. But I'm gonna give you a tiny bit of a glimpse into my world, what has been going on here in the reptile room, a tour that you have been waiting for so long and that will come sooner than you think. So let's have a look right now because last time you saw this behind me looked a lot more like this over here. Yeah, so <laughs> we move things around in this room just a little bit to say the least. And I'm a bit self-conscious about how my home looks, but it kind of looks like someone threw a grenade into my hallway. <laughs> Destroyed everything, cause everything that was kind of in here is out in the hallway. There's a bin with like 60 silkworms in it, a big garbage bag full of things I'm throwing away. Uh, whoa, whoa, look for yourself, it's, it's a disaster. So yeah, we're just gonna Oh boy, I feel like I'm confessing my sins or something. It is. When setting up a new reptile room, purging, reorganizing, it's expected that you would find some mess in the hallway. But don't worry, it's temporary. And as we make our way further into the room, the best part you've been waiting for a long time is the project I've been working on in front of me. And that's all you're gonna get to see for now, but that, my friends, is Sabzi and Basil's future home. It is massive, okay? Think about it. It is very exciting too. Still have to build a canopy on top, so yeah. And as always, I wanna take a moment to sincerely thank my channel patrons over on the Patreon platform. Thank you so much for your additional support, everyone there. You guys are wonderful. You get to enjoy all the perks associated with becoming a Reptiliatus patron, whether it's discounts on merch, sneak peeks on upcoming projects, animals, and more. You've been seeing what I've been doing already with Sabzi and Basil's upgrade. You know all about it. Every little step of the way is revealed to you there. And you have a direct line of communication with me. And of course, at the end of the day, you get an in-video shout out from me. So for today, since our last video where we did shout outs, we are thanking Casey and Enrique. Thank you so much for becoming the newest Reptiliatus channel patrons. And if you're also interested in learning about how you can become a Reptiliatus channel patron, you can check out the link in the video description down below to learn more information. Thanks. Well, everybody, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching today's video. Again, it's always amazing getting to revamp an enclosure to benefit the animals, to be more eye-catching, eye-pleasing. I think it looks a lot better. Uh, if you disagree, I would be very shocked. And of course, I sincerely hope you learned something. If you have any questions you wanna ask, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. And as always, don't forget to answer today's question of the day. Thanks so much, and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Wish me luck. Lots of work to get back to. Take care guys, bye.